Greetings! Let's talk about the display controls. The display property is one of the most commonly used features of CSS development. It is used to control how an element will behave on the canvas. With Site Designer, it offers a lot of display controls. In this tutorial, I will discuss the most common options, including block, inline block, display none, and I'll also touch on Flexbox and CSS Grid. In Site Designer, the display position control can be found on the Styles pane under Layout. Let's start by discussing the display block option. When you add elements to your canvas, they will appear stacked because most of them are set to display block by default. Block position elements will each get their own line, so they will appear stacked. Under the dimension section, you can play with um, their max width and how much space that they each take up on their line. So for example, my picture, if you click on the, um, the measurement control, you can change it to pixels, EMs, VM, or um, even percent. So in my case, I'm going to change it to 50%. If you wanted to center that item, if you select left and right uh, margin to auto, it will pop any block element as center with the exception of text elements like my heading and my paragraph, uh, text elements, uh, their position um, is always controlled under the design align section. And as you can see, because these items are set to block, they, um, they do stack, taking up their own line. This is opposed to if the items were set to inline block, you can have them sit next to each other on the, same, uh, on the same line, basically side by side. So if I select that picture and change it to inline block and do the same for my paragraph, changing the width of that paragraph to 50% like I did to the image, you'll notice that making them inline block, they'll now sit by each other. You can even drag and drop your elements to reposition if you want them to sit in a different order. Another popular display control is the use of none. Before I show you this one, I'm going to change my toggle breakpoints. I'm going to put it back on default mode. This allows me to set, um, uh, set items for specific breakpoints. So if I disable those back to default and move my slider back to um, the mobile view, let's say I don't want that heading to appear for small screens. If I select it and go to the layout section and under more, I can choose uh, none. And that will actually hide the element at that specific breakpoint. So if I move the slider past that first breakpoint and change that element from none back to block or inline block, the element will uh, reappear back on canvas. So as you can see, moving it back to mobile view hides that element. And then for the little larger screen, brings it back into view. Now let's talk about my personal favorite position control, which is Flexbox. You can use it to manipulate elements that are grouped together within a container element. It's actually a really great method for aligning, ordering, sizing, and positioning elements. So on my canvas, I'm going to add a container and then add my content elements to it. The container is a parent item, 
And when using Flexbox, uh, the parent will then control the children elements. Um, so in this case, that would be the heading, the image, and the paragraph that are within that container. So I will select that parent container and under the style pane layout, I will set the display to flex. The direction control changes what order the items appear, such as horizontally um, or vertically. Or as listed within the app, um, it would be column or row. The direction automatically starts as row, but if you choose reverse row, it swaps the elements in the opposite direction making it um, a direction column or reverse column uh, stacks the items uh, vertically. The wrap control allows items to stack if there's not enough space available. For example, if you had multiple images in your canvas, you could make them stack uh, for small screens um, and stretch out uh, for larger screen depending on the item width. One of the best controls is the Align Items feature, which would allow you to position the items um, within that parent um, centered. Um, if you did flex in, it would push them all the way to the end of the container, or the start pushes them to the beginning of the container. If you change that direction to row, for example, and change that um, item alignment to center, um, it pops them center um, horizontally. I could really talk forever about Flexbox options as this feature offers a wide range of position controls, uh, but I'll spare you. Uh, detailed descriptions of each control are available within the help guide along with examples and hands-on tutorials. Uh, check out that link below. The last display control we're going to talk about today is CSS Grid. CSS Grid is the technique that's been blowing up the web lately, as you can direct where you want content and where it should be positioned by either line placement or by um, area name placement. We have several help chapters and videos that offer a deep dive of these controls. Uh, but today, I'm going to demonstrate the grid area placement feature. Grid controls can be applied to a container, which is great for module control, or like my demo here, to the entire body. Area placement will let me specify exactly where the content should lie on the canvas. As you can see, I'm adding in a bunch of elements that I know I will be using in my design in just some random order. I'm also going to pull in a couple of pre-built customizable components um, for my navigation menu, and I'm also going to pull in a footer uh, from the component library. Next, I will select the body element and go to the Styles pane layout section and change the display to Grid. A blue Launch the Grid Editor button will appear, allowing me to start slicing up the body into row column sections. Use the blue plus arrows to build your grid. A plethora of grid settings can be configured, such as column and row width, um, alignment, spatial gap, and a lot more. But I'm going to keep it basic today in this demo uh, and just leave the spacing as auto for the size. With the grid area placement, I can click on the sections and label where I want the content to sit.
You cho should choose semantic names. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty basic here, uh, but make sure that they are labels that you can identify easily. Here is a nice close-up of the area sections that I have created for my canvas. So you can see logo, nav, um, my intro heading, my messages, um, uh, videos, and footer. Once I'm happy with the grid selections, click on apply to canvas to send that grid to the canvas and then click OK. Next, I will need to match the elements to the area names I listed on my grid. Um, one by one, I will select each element and go to the Style Pane, Layout, and scroll down to the Grid and Flexbox Layout section. Using the drop-down option next to uh, Grid, choose Grid Area-Based Placement. Then in the Name box, apply the label from the grid. Site Designer will auto-populate the choices for you just in case you forgot what you labeled the areas. This is really handy so you don't have to type them out each time. You'll rinse and repeat this for each element until they are all labeled. As you apply those area names to the elements, you'll see that they pop into the area of the canvas that we labeled within the grid. This is such a quick way to lay out your content. Um, you know, and if you need to make changes for different screen sizes, um, or you simply just change your mind about a placement of an item, you simply reopen the grid and tweak as needed. This is just a tiny fraction of what CSS Grid can do. For a full breakdown, along with videos and tutorials, uh, please visit the help chapter listed below. Thanks so much for joining me in this demonstration. Liberate your layouts today with these great display options. Have a great day.